Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. I've become completely obsessed with painting snow trees, so I'm going to do another scene, but I'm gonna show it in a slightly different technique than last time. Similar in some ways, but hopefully you'll learn a trick or two along the way with this one as well. So I'm using the app Procreate. I've opened an A4 canvas, and if you want to follow along with the same colors and brushes, well, I'm going to be using airbrushing, soft brush and medium brush, and I'm gonna be using the artistic hearts brush. In terms of the colors, I've already got some pre-selected colors here in this section. So not too many, it's quite a limited color palette. If you look down in the description of this video, there are some codes, some hexadecimal codes, and then you can type them into this section. So you go to the, the color here, and then at the bottom value, type them into here, a hexadecimal one at a time, press enter. The color will appear up here and you can piece them together yourself. Alternatively, there is a link to my Patreon and you can download the color file there for free. You'll also find that down in that description, the links for my Facebook group and my Instagram. So you can follow me along there. You can also tag and share images on the Facebook group. There's tons of other artists there who share their work and get feedback from both myself and the other people in the group. It's a really great community, so come and join us there. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started. So on layer one, I'm going to drag the color that's in the corner to fill the canvas. So that's the first color used. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to choose the second color along, go to my brushes. I'm going to go to the airbrushing and the soft brush. I've not changed any of these settings. It's just on the default. I'm going to put it up quite high to about 15% size and 100% opacity. And just in the center, I'm going to draw a line straight across, maybe just an extra one, double it up slightly as it gets higher up, just a bit more like this. Then I'm going to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to slide it across to about 70%. So it's pretty far along. I'm going to create another layer, go back to my colors. I'm going to choose this last color on the top layer, and I'm going to repeat the process. So we're still on the soft brush. We're still at 15% size, still at 100% opacity but I'm just gonna aim slightly lower down this time. So just a little bit down from halfway, but only a, a touch. And then we'll go slightly the opposite way when I'm thickening up this color. Then same again, we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll let this spread across again to about the 70%. So you can see now each layer has had its own impact but the combination of them really creates the effect that we want. So we'll go to our top layer again, create a new layer, go to our second layer of colors, and we're going to change brush now. We're going to change it to the artistic brush and the hearts brush. Again, I've not changed the settings. It's just the default version. So as long as you have this, just go ahead and use it as is. So for this, I need to create a series of spikes, the tops of trees as we go along. I really, that is the only effect that I'm going for, and I'm just gonna blot out completely the lower section. All of the texture, all of the, the tree elements is gonna be added with the snow effect and the lighter colors. So to begin with, we just need to create that silhouette top part of the tree, and then the rest of it is just gonna be filled completely. So it's quite a straightforward process. So I'm gonna put my brush down to 2%, and I'm gonna put it quite high at 80% opacity. I'm just gonna pick a point now for the top of my tree, my first tree, and you'll be familiar with this process probably if you followed any of my tree painting tutorials previously. It's just taking it left to right. So if you want to, to begin with, you could draw that tree trunk. You're not gonna see it, but it's there as a guide for you. And then just with a series of light taps, we're gonna go left and right, remembering to leave some breaks and some gaps in that texture and you don't want it too uniform. So you don't want one here and one there. It's gonna look a little bit too simplified. You need to keep it looking a bit more random, a bit more natural. And especially if there's snow gathered on it, which there is in this scene, there's loads of snow on the branches, then it's gonna to gather together in clumps as well, in areas, in most of the areas, in fact. It's only the top section where you're gonna get branches that stick out and you're gonna get those gaps. As soon as we get down to about this point, then really we're going to just let it fill in. And it doesn't matter beyond that point what it looks like. Like that. So I'll zoom out, you can see the effect. Zoom back in a little bit. 
and we're going to go for another tree. So we can go for a slightly different height. Again, mix it up. We want it to look not too uniform. So this one, perhaps I'll do a few bigger gaps. Up until a certain point anyway, and then it's going to start getting more dense, gathering more of that snow as it goes further down. And then before you know it, it just becomes a solid mass. Really quite a simple, straightforward process. This in itself is going to create a really nice effect as a silhouette, but the real magic is going to happen when we start adding those lighter tones for the snow. So we're just going to repeat that process. Again, different scales, different heights. Make the way that you add the texture to the top of the tree slightly more random. So I'm going to add another one here. Again, I'll draw the tree trunk. You're not going to see the bottom part, so we're just doing this for the sake of the top section. But I'm going to have this quite top heavy. So this is going to be gathering snow quite heavily at the top. Again, it's important to vary it up so it's different than that one. If they're all exactly the same, then really it's not going to look natural. So variety is key for this. So now we've got three trees and they're all a little bit different and that's exactly the kind of effect that we're going for. So some of them are going to be slightly more distant perhaps and we can exaggerate that effect with some slightly more misting and atmospheric things a little later. I'm just going to do it all in the same colour at the same level to begin with and then we'll create this sense of distance with the atmosphere and atmospherics later on. So I'm going to do a couple of big trees now, slightly more foreground. So it's going to come further into our scene again. Just a tree trunk for my own reference. Might even take a little bit higher. Just one or two spindly little isolated branches on their own. And then quickly go and start having getting bigger clumps. And also a slight change in direction. If we have little branches at the top and they haven't got a lot of snow on them, Maybe they're just going to stick up upwards a little bit more so you get this almost like this V-shape. And then you get a reversal of that shape as you come a little bit further down and then you almost get a reverse V. Certainly by the bottom sections it's going to be mainly this downward movement of the branches. But again, we're going to add most of that sense with the highlights and snow. So don't worry too much about that just yet. I'm going to completely block this in. I've got it on a slightly lower opacity. It creates a little bit more noise and texture and that's no bad thing, that might help us a little bit later on. I think if it's completely dead, completely flat, then actually that can be a bit more of a, an off-putting thing and more of a distraction than anything else. So this slight noise and texture is no bad thing. Sometimes it just gives you a visual cue when you start adding texture on top later on with the snow. Just having slight blobs and gaps and variance in that texture is quite useful. I'm going to do another fairly close tree to this one. So it's all going to merge together there pretty much anyway. That's why it's, it doesn't pay to be too precious as you're doing these. Otherwise, if you're too precious and you're too deliberate about every single brush mark, then really what you're going to be tempted to do is space them too far apart so they don't interfere with each other. Whereas naturally, naturally you're going to get clusters. So don't be too precious, not at this initial stage anyway. Get them in there, get the the bulk of the trees in there and then later on we can start to refine if you want to. Okay, I'm just going to repeat that process. I'm going to create different heights, different sense that maybe they're coming slightly forward. I guess if they're bigger then the chances are they're going to be slightly closer to the smaller ones, although not necessarily, but generally the smaller ones might give a sense of distance. On that basis, a really more close to one, a bigger tree, Now, I've no doubt that you can get brush stamps or tree stamps out there for Procreate and you can just, you know, <laughs> create this kind of effect pretty straightforwardly. But I think there is a danger that things can look too perfect, too photographic, and then if you, the rest of your effects are not quite at the same level, then you're gonna create that disunity, that disjointed effect between one part of your scene, one part of your image, one part of your artwork, and then another aspect. 
But I do think that it's better all round if you learn how to do these textures and create these things yourself more manually. Honestly, I think that's where the fun is anyway. I do warn against getting too reliant upon stamps and brushes. Now this brush, having said that, creates a nice texture which is really useful, but it's nothing that you couldn't achieve with a, a traditional paint and brush anyway. So for these tutorials, I do try to keep the general approach as almost traditional as possible. It is you know, where I started. I, I started with traditional canvas and paint. And so pretty much everything I do comes from that starting point, really. So I'm almost really translating everything I've learned with real paint, real canvas into the digital area. Now, there's definitely some things that you can do here that you could never do traditionally, but still, generally, the, the overall approach is that. I'm not a complete purist. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with using digital tools. If they give you an advantage, then, you know, and it's all about the image at the end of the day. If they give you an advantage and you create a, a better image as a result, a more inspiring image, as long as it's not just traced completely and it's not just a paint over, then I don't see any difference between that and a traditional painting, personally. So for all those people out there doing digital work that get negative, unconstructive comments of accusing it of being cheating or not real art, then I just recommend that you ignore them. It's a very old fashioned perspective and I think that it's one that's it's pretty quickly disappearing in the art world. And anyone that can't embrace the new technology, the new tools, is just destined to be left behind in my opinion. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in the rest of the trees, then we'll start on the lighter tones. So okay, so we've created the top edge and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna go and increase the size of my brush to about 10% and I'm just gonna use that to fill in this bottom section now. Just get rid of that lighter color. We're gonna put a lighter color back in, but it's just useful. Now you can see the effect of the sky. And on that basis, what I was saying to you before is that we have all the earlier colors on different layers and I feel like I want to just increase the light in that area. I did say this was something that could happen, so I'm gonna duplicate that layer three, which was the warm color, and you can see the impact of duplicating it. I think that is better. I'm gonna try even now. Now I've pinched them together, duplicating them again, and I'm even happier with that effect, so that's great. So I'll pinch those two layer threes together. So now we've still only got one layer of layer three. What you might notice once you've done things like that is you get this strange banding where it just is starting to separate the colors. So you can easily fix that by going to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in slightly. And it pretty much gets rid of it. You only have to do it about 10% or so, and it gets rid of that. In fact, on that basis, I'm gonna go back to layer two, slide it across, duplicate it, and we've got even more light coming into that scene. So again, I'm gonna pinch those two layer, layers together. So sometimes when you've got a, a blank canvas, then those colors and that brightness can seem quite a lot. But then when you start adding other elements to it, you realize that by contrast, it actually looks quite dull. So I'm happier with that effect. I'm gonna go back to our top layer, create another layer. So on this top layer, we're going to be using the hearts brush again. I'm gonna have it back down at the 2%, and I'm gonna put the opacity at around 50%. And you can see, if I zoom in, you can see that it will show up and that's exactly what we need. But before I start adding any of this snow effect, because I've lightened up the background, everything you do in digital on a, on a lower layer has a knock-on effect. So some of these darker colors that I initially added that look quite dark now have a more translucent effect. So what I'm going to do to compensate for that again is go back to my layer four. And this is, this is useful, although I could show you a shorter route to make sure this doesn't happen. I think including these kinds of fixes and these kind of errors along the way is actually the reality of what you're likely to face during doing digital work. So 
I'm going to take that layer with all the trees and I'm going to duplicate it, which makes it too dark, but I can go to that new version of it by clicking on the end and turn the opacity down to nothing, which hasn't helped because that's put us back where we were. But I can put it up somewhere, again, not at the 100%, but maybe around the 50% or 60% even, and that's pretty much saved the problem. So it's got rid of that extra light color but it still left some of that variance and texture for us, which is perfect. So on this new layer we just created, layer five, I'm going to use the hearts brush. I'm gonna use it at the 2% size and 50% opacity on this second color. And now I can zoom in and like I was saying before, there's already bits of texture there. So I'm just, I'm kind of adding to the texture that's already there. I don't need to completely do it all from scratch. There's already on my version and presumably if you've done it in a similar fashion there'll already be breaks, there'll already be texture. So I'm just exaggerating it now. I'm going in there and I'm doubling down on all those little points and I'm zooming in so you can see the difference because when I zoom out you won't necessarily see it as clearly. But I zoom in there you can see the difference in tone. So I'm just starting to break it all up really. And we'll continue to do that further down. The groupings of this tone is going to get slightly bigger as it goes further down. We get bigger branches and they support bigger clumps of snow as a result. We're still going to have breaks, it's not going to be completely solid. So another thought on how I'm doing this, I'm doing it almost like a sweeping left to right and I'm also curving it slightly as you'll see because some of the branches are going to be sticking forward some of them are going to be sticking that way, some of them are going to be that way. So overall, you're going to create this sort of sweeping movement. And it doesn't want to be too uniform. So I'm keeping some of it lower, some of it higher. You want to keep it disjointed and a little bit more random than that. But still, it helps to think of it in those terms. Now, this is the most subtle color. So we're going to go in with brighter colors and really bring out that effect. So when we look at it from a distance, you really kind of notice it. And I can go in there and I can just add some smaller bits of texture to break it up as well. This is just one of the trees. I'm going to do the same effect for all of the trees, pretty much. Obviously, if it's a more distant tree, we're not going to get as bigger blocks. It has to be proportionate and relevant for the tree, obviously. So I'll move over to another tree, for example. It might be over here. Zoom in a little bit. And you're not going to notice this lighter tone on it too much, but I'm still going to add it because the majority of it, or quite a lot of it, is already that kind of color anyway. But that's fine. What I will do with a lighter color is I'll add some lighter color to that section and then that will bring that out more. So I'm just gonna carry on with it down into this lower section. And you will start to notice it in this area. Now it doesn't all have to be completely solidly packed out with snow. You can keep it a little bit more sparsely populated perhaps in certain areas. So you can leave some gaps doesn't all have to be completely densely covered in snow. Some bits will be, but not necessarily everyone. And then I'm going to go to another one. And you can really be quite haphazard with this too. Be a bit more random. But the general movements, and I'll just show you this close up, is that I'm going strokes like this. So it's thinking of it down on one side and then down on the other as well. So these are the general brush directions that I'm thinking of. So nothing is going up on the right and nothing is going up on the left either. So either side of the tree, it's generally going in a downward movement. That's the way I'm imagining it anyway. In the middle, nothing wrong with it going straight down. Again, just smaller blocks. You don't necessarily need to have them all super delineated and defined separately from each other. It's just a general sense of lots of texture in that area. And you know, your imagination will do some of that separating it out anyway. So I'm gonna zoom back out, pick another tree perhaps I want to bring forward. So I think this one I'm going to bring forward a little bit. I want this to be slightly more prominent. So I'll just go and add some of the texture into that one and it's gonna go over the top. The point of deciding which ones are gonna go forward is you do those first, and then when you add the clumps of snow, it's gonna go in front of and obscure this tree that which is just poking out 
from behind. So by adding the direction of the snow on top of it, you can't see the snow that's added underneath this more prominent tree. So you can see this is going squarely in front of that tree. There's nothing really that difficult about this kind of texture, I guess. It's just learning to be loose, learning to be random. Which I guess takes a little bit of time to learn the confidence in that, but it isn't, it isn't difficult as such. It's just learning, like I say, the, the skill of being a little bit more relaxed and allowing it to be random. And just sitting back and, and looking at it and thinking, well, maybe I can clump them together a little bit more, see what works. If it doesn't work, well, it's digital, you can backtrack it, it isn't a problem. And you don't do, have to do everything at this point because we're going to go back over with light, lighter colours as well. This is just the starting point for our texture. And it, it is quite time consuming, but I do think that it's part of the process. I do think it's important. So settle in, be prepared to spend the time on your artwork. I think the more time you spend doing this, the more confident your eye is going to become and your hand, that muscle memory, that sense of looking at it more in depth and more meaningfully. Like I say, there are always cheats and shortcuts, but really, I think the doing of it and really getting your eye attuned to what should be there is the thing that really advances you as an artist. I think relying too much on tools and brushes isn't the way forward. So on that basis, I'm just going to, I'm just going to bring this tree slightly more further forward. So you can notice that one perhaps a little bit more, pack it out with snow. And I'm going to have this, obviously, is where it meets the, the floor. I'm going to use some lighter colours for the snow for that section, so don't worry too much about that. I'm going to have a really nice big tree at this side creeping in, so I need to add some more to this. And another nice, relatively prominent one here. Kind of competing with this one, but that's fine. Now, I know this is the third snow tree kind of tutorial done in a row. I really love doing this. I think the, the effect is so effective that it just becomes really quite addictive and addicting to, to do this. So, you know, why not go with it? It's that time of year. Certainly here in the UK, we're getting snow. I'm sure we're getting plenty of areas where some of you are that are getting snow as well. So why not? If you're not going to do it in the middle of winter, then when are you going to do this kind of scene? Okay, so that will do for most of the textures. For that bottom layer, I'm going to just increase the size of the brush to about 8% and I'm just I'm going to start putting in a lighter tone here where it almost kind of merges at the bottom of that tree area. I want to keep like a dark tone to separate it. I don't want it completely blending in. I want to keep, keep like a hard edge perhaps, but I just want to start lightening up that area. Again, it's still at the 50% opacity. We're going to use a much, much lighter colour over the top. I just think as we move along, we may as well keep that sense of a difference of area, keep that going as well. Okay, we'll go to our layers, we'll create another layer, go to our colours, we'll go for this third colour along, which as you can see is quite a lot lighter. We're going to turn the brush size down again to about the 2%, keep it at the 50% opacity, and we're going to be a little bit more careful now with where we add it. We don't add it to everywhere. So certainly on some of these bigger clumps that are coming out on the bigger trees, we can add some of this lighter tone. Now you don't just want to necessarily completely go over every single bit of texture that you've just created. Some of them, yes, you'll go over it a bit, create highlights, create points that stick out a little bit more, but there's no point completely going over every single bit of texture that you've just created. So you will double down and increase it in some areas, but then in other areas you can just have it on its own even. So I would almost like squint your eyes, blow your eyes a little bit, go for, if you can, the overall effect, and yes, add it in areas on its own, like I've just done then. In some areas it's gonna double down and duplicate the impacts of things that you've already done. So don't stick too slavishly to what you've already created. Just allow yourself to still remain a little bit free. You're probably not needing to do as much of this as you did with the last tone there. So do this a bit more sparingly. Keep zooming out. Is it starting to bring it out? Is it starting to make it look 3D? It should do. I'm 
Okay, so I'm quite happy with the way that's looking. Maybe just a, you know, a few more just to bring out that, that edge of it here. You can further refine or define rather the edge of that tree with a few more brighter highlights there just to really sell it, bring it out as opposed to the ones that are behind it. And again, this one, this edge of it here, for example, I'm probably going to want to add some more highlights to that edge just to bring it out and separate it from the one that's a bit more distant. It's not to say we won't add anything to that distant one, but we're going to make more of a point of bringing out this one. Again, spend the time. I mean, so far on this painting, whilst I've been teaching it, I've spent about 40 minutes so far, so it doesn't take too much time. I know I've sped it up slightly for the, the actual video that you're watching, but in reality, this is about 40 minutes work so far, maybe even a bit less. By the time I've done, I expect this to take about an hour, even if the tutorial is about half that length of time. Again, just keep adding layers of texture into this. Allow it to clump together in certain areas. Bulk it out. And I'm just going to move now to this tree, do the same thing. I'm going to sweep across. You'll see this effect duplicated in all the trees. Not all completely the same. Allow each tree to have, you know, a little bit of character of its own. Try and keep it a little bit random. As much as we have a general pattern, snow and nature rarely sticks to that pattern 100%. So whatever you've determined is the approach, just keep it a little bit more random than an absolute uniform way of doing it. Okay, and just a little hint of this lighter tone for the ones that are just poking through in the distance but you're gonna concentrate most of your work on the ones that are a little bit more foreground. Now, as we get lower down here, I'm going to use a slight misting effect. So this will kind of blur this in a little bit. So don't worry too much about the way it joins at the bottom. It's all gonna be blended together anyway, a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to move across here. And if you long press on the eraser and then tap on the eraser, you'll now see that the eraser has got the same brush. So if there's any areas where you feel like it's just gone too much and maybe we've set it to the same size of 2% and 50% opacity still, so it's the same and matched to the brush, then with the same kind of texture, you can just go in and remove bits that you may have overdone. And it's bound to happen, so it's not a problem, is it? Back to the brush, and then we can keep adding more positive brushes or marks. And we'll just move across the last section over here. Okay, so. That's got us so far. We've straight started to create this kind of more 3D look for quite a few of the trees, which is working, and I'm quite happy with that. Again, we're gonna do the same effect. We're gonna turn it up to about 8%, keep it at the 50% opacity, and just start to blot in some lighter color here at the bottom section, just so we're taking this with us. Not too much, don't blend it in too much. We'll take that back a little bit, keep that separation. And we're going to create another layer. And this time we're going to go to our bottom colors. And this first color, I'm going to go back to my airbrushing, the medium brush, sorry, the soft brush. I don't think we're actually going to have much need for the medium brush, we'll see. We might use it just a little bit for the snow at the end. So I'm back on the soft brush. I'm going to put it to around 10% size and really low on the opacity at 10% as well. And I'm just going to start bringing in some of this mist. Again, it's on a brand new layer, so don't worry too much. I'm just going to start bringing it in. It's going to start just up to about halfway. And I can go over it and over it and over it. And I'm going to build this up in this lower section, especially. 
Let's create a sense that there's snow here. I'm also going to allow it to go over this section quite a bit as well. And if we want, we can always blur this in. If you feel like you're getting the streaks and you don't like that. So this is the, the general effect that I'm going to be going for for this. And you can see with and without. And I'm going to go to that Gaussian blur. So adjustments, go to that again, sorry, adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm going to slide that across to about the 30%. That's, that's more than enough, really. Then we can go to the transform tool. We can play around with that. You can see it's on uniform, so we don't want it on that. We want it on freeform. We can pinch it in and we can play around with just how impactful that's going to be anyway. So I want to leave the top sections of the trees quite dark still. So I'm only going to take it up to about there. And now you can start to see that it's really blending it in a little bit, which is great. So I'm going to create another layer back to my colors. This top color, now it's almost the same color, one along, the last one along on the middle row. So we'll put that back down to, oops, we'll go back to the artistic hearts brush, put it back down to the 2% again, and it's on the 50% opacity. And we'll zoom in, and we're gonna use this now just to bring out some sections of snow now that we really want to bring forward. This is gonna be quite impactful. So we definitely want to be a bit more subtle with its use. Don't go overboard with it, use it more sparingly. Like I say, it's gonna be pretty powerful compared to everything else, so bit by bit. All the other textures that we've added so far aren't going anywhere, they're still noticeable even through that mist, but we're just ramping up some bits of it. In fact, I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit, so I'm gonna put it at more like 30%. It's just a bit easy to go overboard with this, so I'm just gonna Dial it back a little bit, it's still very impactful. We can just be a little bit more gradual in the way that we build it up. So you're not obliterating the previous textures, they're still there. And we don't need to add this bright white into everywhere. So I say bright white, it isn't bright white, it just looks a lot brighter compared to some of the other colors. So it's going to be merging with the color of the ground as well. And it will look less impactful when we have more of that bright color at the bottom. So it looks a little bit over the top at the moment, but it won't do because it will start to blend in as I show you more of that color at the bottom there. So we can move across to a couple of other trees. Again, allow this to be probably the most random of the, of the, the layers of texture, in fact. We don't want any real uniformity to this. So we're certainly gonna add it into areas where perhaps we've got the biggest clumps. So towards the bottom, perhaps we're gonna get a little bit more of this, but we don't want to allow it to become too uniform. So yes, we're going to have bits of it near the top, but keep it really quite sporadic and random. So the point of this tutorial is really pretty much about texture. So I'm hoping that this is helping you in your texture making. Hoping this is giving you some confidence, some ideas. And you can have a go at doing this too. Like I say, it's one of my favorite things to do because I think the effect is so dramatic and effective and it's not that difficult to do really. I think it's a, you know, of all of the types of textures that you can do, the effect of this is, is pretty successful and relatively easy to actually create, if a little time consuming perhaps. I say time consuming, I think texture is one of the things that I really enjoy doing the most. So. In these tutorials, I have you know, specific landscapes, but when I do my own personal work, or I do some very strange, kind of surreal pieces of work, I might spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing tiny little details like insect hairs on a strange alien landscape, for example. And honestly, I spend an absolute age doing textures like that. So personally, this is the kind of thing that, I don't know, I kind of enjoy it. It does require patience, I, I understand that, but for me, I find the patience part of art the most satisfying because this is the point where it's almost like a meditation. And if you just get into the right mindset, then it can be really enjoyable. Again, so I'm allowing this to just clump together in really quite random blocks at this point. It's not, it's not going to be as uniform as predictable. And that's to be expected. And I'm just going to do some of this effect over here as well. I 
maybe turn the size of the brush down to the lower end of 2%. There is quite a lot of variance even within that 1%. The lower bit of 2% is quite a lot narrower and smaller than the top end of 2%. So be aware of that. Change it to your needs. Okay, so that's a lot of the texture added. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go to the second color here at the bottom row. Back to my airbrushing, the soft brush. I'm going to put it up to about 10% size and down at the 10% opacity. And I'm just, again, in fact, I'm going to turn it bigger. Let's put it more at the 15% size. I'm going to just start adding in some of this light tone now. So it's going in slowly because it's only at that 10% opacity. So you don't have to worry too much. And again, we're just starting to merge those layers together at the bottom. Something like that. Then I can go to my Gaussian Blur. So adjustments, Gaussian Blur, and blend it in a little bit to about the 40%. I'm going to create another layer on top, still on this lightest of colors. I'm going to go back, still with a soft brush, but turn it down. I'm going to put it at around 3% size, put it up to about 20% opacity. And I'm now going to go in and I'm just going to create a, an edge now for the bottom of my snow areas. So I'm going to keep it relatively broken, but I want to go in there and just create a point at which the snow juts up to and meets. In fact, I'm going to turn the brush size down as well, back down to 2%. I do like the 2%. It seems to be a random thing but actually most of the time when I'm doing these kind of paintings I guess because I'm using an A4 canvas because the size of my canvas is consistent it seems I can consistently go back to the 2% when I want to do my fine details it seems to be pitched at just the right level for the amount of detail that I will need and want to add to the scene so I'm just jutting up in fact we'll go to the lower end of 2% zoom in and we'll just create some bits where it nibbles into that edge so it's not a completely neat edge it kind of merges so we're keeping quite a rough surface there in places and then again just create a little bit of a nice edge so now we can bring the texture down to that point as well go across back up a little bit to 3%. Some areas it's just going to blend in softly and that's great too. Maybe over here it can blend in a bit more softly. I'll have some breaks. I'm doing streaks across and you can see I'm getting bands and I'm getting breaks in that texture. Probably better that way. Looks a bit more natural. Blend it in a little bit there. So I have created that harder edge where it nibbles in, but perhaps I just want to soften it in a little bit as well. Again, move across the scene. Maybe turn the size of my brush up to about 5%. Start creating some more streaks and bands that run across like this. That's quite nice. Maybe almost create a sense of perspective. We have got it getting smaller over here. So maybe we've got a, a directionality with the, the bands of the stripes of the snow as well. Now, as I was saying before, we can use the atmosphere or the atmospheric conditions to just make some of them look a little bit more distant. Now I've overkilled it there, but you get the effect. I'll take it back, perhaps just dial it back to about the 10% again. I'm just going to go over this section just a little bit, just to soften it in. Perhaps if we want a sense that these trees are a little bit more distant, we can just do that with them, just to knock them back a little bit. I'm only lightly tapping on them now. So anyway, when you want to just knock a tree back slightly compared to the others, then that's going to help. Perhaps just a hint of going over that one. Not too much, not too much, just a bit. I do think actually, if I went back to these tree layers, I'm going to merge them together. So we're going layer four, I'm going to pinch them together. If you cut, struggle to do that, just tap on the layer and then there's the merge down. So now that's the same as pinching them, whichever way works best for you. I'm going to go to that layer because it is quite, well, it is quite sharp really. So I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm just going to blur it into about the 2%. It's just gonna soften it compared to everything else now. So when we do zoom into those trees, details, they're not too much. Back to my top layer, using the lightest color. Um, we're still on the 5% size and the 10% opacity. So I'm just gonna soften it in even more in this section. Again, just like the trees at the tops needed softening, we're gonna have this 
softening at the bottom as well, where it blows in. So just in terms of the sky, I'm going to go back to the layer three where we have that nice warm color. I'm going to use the soft brush again with that warm color, which is the third color on the top. So the soft airbrush at around the 2% size and 10% opacity. And I'm going to use it on this layer to bring some hints of streaks of slight texture into that sky, just to make it look a little bit more lively things going on there perhaps just creates an, another texture in our scene gives it a bit more believability so I'm pressing on lightly gives you something a bit more interesting to look at in this in these sections I'm going to turn it up to the 4% size just to allow that texture just to broaden off over here and then I'm just going to add a bit more of it down here as well might just go to my top layer now with that color and just it's still on the low 10 percent i'm just going to add a hint of it into the snow area just over this side where almost when we've got like a a peak area of brightness and warmth so it's just going to reflect a little bit more now i'm only using it as a hint but a hint of it over in this section as well and i think that works maybe just a couple of blobs to show slight more focus of texture in the foreground but not much and then I'm going to go in with my slightly darker tone here turn it down to the lower end of 2% put it up to about the 20% so on this top layer I can just create some hints of noise in the snow if I want to and you can really go to town with this if you want I'm only going to put a suggestion of it in here and if you want to spend longer doing this then go ahead maybe some animals have been walking across it or has been does some disruption anyway, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this particular tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, make sure to share your results with me on Instagram, tag me, share it on my Facebook group. Again, all the links are down in my description. Please make sure to press the thumbs up and the bell notification button to make sure that you're notified of all of these tutorials in the future as well. Catch you back here soon. See you later. Bye.